All right, what's up guys, Mitch Orditi, and today we're gonna to be doing a new player tier list. So this is gonna be kind of part of the new player guide series I'm doing, but this is gonna be just a video showing you that the characters that you pulled, maybe some of you got lucky and pulled some of the uh, characters you're not sure if they're good or not. I'm gonna tell you whether or not they are good as a new player. So there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna disagree with me on all of this. It's a fun part of tier list, but as a person who just made a new account, pushed a master's RTA in 30 days, I saw what was possible. Um, I, I know <clears throat> I know the game pretty pretty well, I would say. I've been playing it for four years. Um, the high-end PvP I've fallen out of, but for the common player pushing up to about Emperor, um, I, I have a pretty good knowledge base. So I'm going to do this, and this is going to not just be PvP, but it's going to be like a PvP PvE tier list. It's basically going to be, is your character you pulled usable? Um, and how usable are they? So Akades, I'm going to go ahead and instantly put at A tier. She's a solid character that can be used for raid. Um, just overall PvE content. So she's not a character you can use her in PvP, but she's not a character that gets a lot of play. Waiting room, A Raz is gonna be S plus tier, he's amazing for PvE. He could be used in PvP. Basically, if a character is good for PvE and could be used in PvP as well, he's gonna they're gonna go in S plus tier. S tier is gonna be the characters that are easy to gear and can be used in PvP, but also have some PvE use cases. A tier is gonna be basically the characters that either can only be used in PvE or PvP. Um, one or the other and sometimes a character will sneak in S tier if they're super super good at what they do But most characters are gonna be A and B tier is gonna be the characters that you could use them if you get lucky on gear And that's gonna go with Inos. Inos is a solid solid character Don't get me wrong, but as a new player You're not gonna have the gear for her unless you get some pretty good speed set But this is gonna be focusing on characters who are players who have been playing for probably two months or less Whether or not you're gonna be able to use that character you pulled within the first two months of you playing. So Inos is gonna go straight waiting room. Valencia is gonna go to S. So Valencia, you can get the free injury set from Arena and those pieces, um, usually you can end up making a decent injury version of her, which makes her immediately usable in PVP. She's gonna be a great way to fight a Ravis. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw Alexa in A because she's good at Wyvern. Like I said, if they're good at Wyvern or Arena and not, or not hard to gear, they're gonna go in A. But if they're hard to gear, they're gonna go in B. So Wanda. Wanda has a chance to be used. She's not great. As a new player, you're going to have less options to fight evasion units, and there's a little bit of evasion meta, or not really, but there's some characters that she could help you deal with. She's going to be a little bit hard to gear, kind of hard to gear. You really only need speed and effectiveness, though. So she can be used if you get her. A Tywin's going straight to S tier. He's super easy to build. You can throw him on a lot of different kinds of builds. A basic thing is just getting a bunch of defensive stats on it, HP defense. You don't need effectiveness, you don't need effect res. He just speed, HP defense, and he's gonna work well. I wouldn't put him in S plus tier because he's not great for PVE. He can be used, but not perfect. So Momo, I'm gonna go ahead and throw an A tier. Momo, I would say probably better than uh, Akades, but I'm not gonna list them because that's gonna take forever in the order that they'd be good. But she's she can be used in PVP just like Akades, just isn't done often. It's like when a bunch of characters are banned, she can be a good pick. But she is fantastic for for PvE. Um, some people use their front tank for Wyvern. I, again, I'm going to be making a Wyvern guide in a few days saying not to use a healer as your front tank. If you can avoid it, use Crows at Rose, uh, Tywin, some G Pergus if you get lucky and get them, but Crows at Rose or Tywin for your front tank for Wyvern because it just makes your daily life of playing Epic 7 a lot faster if you do not have a ton of time to put into the game. And I, I, that'll be explained in the Wyvern guide. I'm not going to argue with people in here, but Angelica and Mount Marine say I do not suggest using for your Wyvern front tank for the long term especially like within two weeks you should have them off your wyvern team if possible so i'm gonna go ahead and throw sangelica here too she's a little bit harder to gear she needs high effect res but she can be very very nice for guild wars arena sometimes and she can be used in rta but she's again not a character that's picked a lot a by ravi's going straight up to us here she'll be used in labyrinth she has a ton of morale for different characters or with different characters she could be used in all pvp uh, she's decently easy to build a usable one hard to build a very good one but we have two Aramenthos for some reason. I'm gonna go ahead and throw her, them both at B. She is a usable character. Not really though, she's not very good at all. Um, honestly, I'll just put her in the waiting room. RB is going to be S plus tier. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, well, RB's not that great in RTA. You guys don't know what you're doing in RTA. If you fifth pick RB in like half of your drafts against especially newer players, he's going to win you the game. If they, if they don't draft counters to RB at the beginning of the draft, you draft him at the end, he can, he can tear through tanks. I. Like, I, I win so many games with the RB. Granted, my RB is god gear on my main account, but uh, torrent set, infinite damage. But RB can just win you games. Counter RB can win you 
game still too you just have to pick him light draft and for pve he's a god he's pretty easy to gear to make him to where he's going to work well as an early pvp player um, putting a free attack set on it makes him one of the most efficient farmers for pve you can use the same build for both both things he's just super good so this character i'm going to go ahead and throw an s tier um no i'm not i'm gonna throw her an a tier she she is great but getting a good build on her early game is going to be very very hard and with how many characters there are in the game especially with last rider crow and there's just a lot of stuff that stops her now there's a lot of effect, high effect res cleansers um she she can still be good but for an early game player you're not going to get the full use out of her so Ar Car armin's the same way she probably should be a b tier because she takes counter set and she needs pretty good gear to work airwell's going straight up to s plus tier she is the best free knight you can get she's going to s plus tier easily um, she's easy to gear. Uh, she adds the most mitigation for your team as possible. Put her on adamant shield. She's amazing for new players. I threw my protection set I got from uh, the Labyrinth on her on the 30 day challenge account. And because I couldn't do her skill tree because I didn't have enough resources. And she gave everyone a barrier, had 25k HP, gave me infinite survivability, was amazing. So for a new player, she's fantastic. So Cartusia. Adds a lot of RNG into the game. He's been buffed recently. He's going to S tier. You can put him on whatever gear and he just gives you a free chance to win. Good anti-cleave unit. So as a new player, he's a character that's easy to gear. Gives you a chance to win games you shouldn't normally win. So he he, he gets S tier for that. He's not good in PvE, but his, his ability to open up your possibilities to win games you shouldn't, he just gets straight up into there. So these two are going to the B tier for sure. You're not going to have a speed gear to use them. They're okay characters um, for a late game player, but early game, you're never going to be able to use these two for anything. You just cannot build a proper build on them. A Coley, you can get away with building like a 240 speed one, but then drafting her is very, very hard, especially nowadays where everybody plays AoE characters. She used to be a character that I could squeeze in sometimes, but no good. Waiting room, bounce is on. He has some cases for PVE, so I'll put him here. Uh, you can use them in Expo, but just use Mercedes. Just use Mercedes 10A, and you can three-star uh, green Expo. Just Mer fire Mercedes and Spectre Cenebrio with a Raz Tamer, and you have a three-star or a level three Expedition team right there. You don't need to build him. He's a waste of resources. Don't bother. So Biken, I'm going to go ahead and throw in an A tier because she is the lowest. She's coming up soon. Um, if you're watching this video right when it comes up, the Guilty Gear collab's coming back. She is the lowest gear requirement one-shot Banshee character. So you can get her, you can throw the free attack set that you get from uh, Story, and you can one-shot Banshee with that just by putting Vivian, her, and you can even use uh, Falconer Clary if your Vivian is geared well enough. But most of the time, you're going to end up needing to use Leo or Shadow Rose. But either way, she is the lowest lowest gear requirement one-shot Banshee character. So she's getting an A for that for sure. She's not great in PvP. She might get an uh, EE or exclusive equipment that's going to make her better but she is she would be the character i pull out of guilty gear a lot of people are going to say jacko because she can be used in pvp but as a new player you're not gonna be able to utilize jacko ever but by getting bike in you open yourself up to being able to farm banshee much quicker than if you didn't get her so if you're going to be summoning on G uh, guilty gear i would pull her over all the other characters dizzy's okay for some pve content abyss but overall bike your best bet in terms of count progression but sorry i'm going to put a b there's just better options if you do get Basari, he takes pretty good gear. He has really bad base speed. You're not going to be able to build him properly. Uh, Basque, you're not going to get him unless you do the thing. He's just going to be a waiting room character. Batiste, waiting room. Wajashuri is going to go into B. Uh, he is good for one-shining hunts and is a speed imprint, but you're not going to have his imprints as a new player. So you're not going to be able to utilize speed imprints. So you're not going to have a fast enough character to utilize speed imprints. So he's low tier. Uh, he has insane damage. He can be used in arena as a lower end player, but he's gonna take up some pretty good gear and you're not gonna have a bridge character. He's just not good for a new player. Blown is okay for a new player. She's decent and a little bit of content, but I wouldn't focus on putting any resources into her. Benevolent Roman, I'm just gonna put in a waiting room. Basar would be a better option than Benevolent Roman. So I'm gonna go ahead and put BBK S tier. She is very solid. She can trap people in drafts. She's good for farming um, or not, or I mean, she's okay for farming. But she's good for her S3 can't be countered, so you can fight characters with uh, counter abilities and just slap her in. She was part of my 30-day er, uh, Masters uh, challenge. She's pretty good. Blood Moon Haste, I did pull him too on my 30-day Masters challenge. He is not, he's just not in a good spot right now. I'm going to put him down to B. I did build him up a little bit and use him for some arena for people who had RB or Reviver or Revive characters on their defense. And he won me those games. But if you get him, I wouldn't put a lot of resource into him. MLKen's going to be the same way. He is not great for new players. 
he just he takes kind of specific gear to be really good otherwise he's too squishy briseria is going to s tier for new players you won't be able to build her properly but having the anti-revive opens you up to being able to be really strong in different drafts so a lot of this is pvp focused because pve is so easy in this game which if you are not following my new player guide uh, i've had like five videos of that so my new player guide is going to be covering everything within the game so all pve um getting to hell raid is going to be hard that's going to take like a month or like the hell nightmare raid that's going to take quite a while i wouldn't worry about that but it'll be basically all pve content up to beating chapter 4 4 to get eight or 4 10 to be aiden or 10 10 chapter 4 to get aiden whatever so getting aiden and then doing hell raid that'll probably be the the ending point of the the guide besides a little bit of how to get into early uh, RTA. So Camille is actually a pretty usable character for one shots later. I'll put her in B tier. She can be pretty good for PvE. Rickerus is going straight to waiting room. Carmen Rose, I'll, I'll put up because she has a specialty change. And you can use her. She's pretty good for like some of the Abyss challenge floors, but you can find replacements. Um, I wouldn't put a ton of effort into her, but she is very solid for PvE content. But she's going to get a B because you're never going to use her in PvE. Carrot, I'm going to put at A tier. Carrot's not really too great anymore. It's her specialty change. That makes her pretty solid. She's most likely a B tier character. Let's put her B tier. She's uh, she's higher than Carmen Rose. Carrot still has some viability, but there's so many characters to give immunity that she just can't work the way she's supposed to anymore. This is a definite waiting room. Asaria is a PVE goddess. Um, you don't need her. I learned, I played through. I didn't really, I got her off selective. I didn't use her. So that's why I say get this scene off selective because you do not need Asaria until like late, late. So as a new player, she can help, but isn't necessary. Uh, Cecilia as a knight, she could technically be A tier. Um, she can be used, but you're going to have other knight options that you're going to use instead. But if you do end up using Cecilia, she can be pretty solid. The, again, the problem is for PvP, everyone has immunity, but having a knight on your team, if she's one of your only knight options, which you're going to have a Raz and you're going to have Aero Will most likely, if you get semi-lucky. And you're going to have Falconer Clary. All those characters are better than her, so she'll just go to A. She is usable. Celeste is just going to the waiting room. You're not going to be able to use her. This character, Celestial Mercedes, you're not going to be able to use her. Selene is definitely going... I would say Selene would be S tier. She's pretty easy to gear, and you can utilize her easy. She's easy to play against, but newer players aren't going to know how to play against her. So she's a character that could help you a lot with uh, low gear requirements. Cerise is a limited unit. You're not going to be able to get her. You're not going to be able to get the speed for her. But she is great for PvE, so she's going to get A tier. Sermia is a free character. Everyone's going to get her. She'll go A tier. She's very good for clearing story. She's uh, good for uh, some other stuff here and there uh hall of trials she can be good at so she'll get a she's very high damage c dom can go ahead and get a too she's pretty she's pretty easy to gear and you can find uses for her she does a lot of damage you can use her in some pv content too champ serato is getting a as well he can be decent so champ serato is going to be mainly used in um you labyrinth so he's pretty good there you can't he's in a bad spot for pvp chaos sectax has some viability he can be b so charles can be pretty good uh for clearing content he's gonna go into a he's can be used in a banshee team so charles he's not good for pvp he can be okay if you draft him right into a bunch of grass units but there's just better characters you can draft violet i'll give charles an a i'm gonna go through this pretty quick like I'm basically the, the goal of this guide is to highlight if you got one of the S or S plus or S characters you're golden everything below that is just is what it is so Charlotte is is in the same boat she's pretty good but she's gonna be hard to gear properly because she doesn't need crit chance you're not gonna be able to gear her within the first month of playing it's just the way it is uh, she's gonna go into B tier she's pretty much just for wyvern I mean you're not gonna get enough gear for, to use her at any higher level than that so Shu is going into S tier for sure. You can get the free counter set. She is definitely the selective summon two character pick. You will pick her every single time. She might be S plus. This is a character you're getting for sure. And you're going to be able to, she, she, she wins so many games. She's going S plus. Shu is so good right now. Christy can go A. She's good, but I, I wasn't able to gear her as an early player. I wasted a six star on her. So I'm going to put her at B, but if you, by month two, you could probably use her decently. So like I said, this was two months of playing. I'll put her at A tier, and if it's two months of playing, watch a sure you can go A tier too. All these other characters, though, you're not going to be able to gear. Sid, you're not going to be able to gear to a point where he's good, but I'll go ahead and put him A tier if watch a sure he's there. Uh, Sid, is he gets a free 15% crit chance on his S3, and he has high base speed, and he's a speed imprint. So he has a lot of viability, but as an early game player, it's going to be hard to use him because he won't have the imprints. Clarissa, B, Wyvern only unit. Closer, Charles can go A too. 
You're not going to be able to gear him to the extent he needs to, but if you build a bulkier one, his SO can't be countered. He has really good damage. So he, he's, he's a pretty solid ML5. He would probably be about that tier anyway if I were doing a full PvP tier list. Um, he's good, or he's on A tier, yeah, he's good, but hard to hard to use. Lorena is going to go into that same tier just because she can be used in PvE. Uh, pretty, pretty well. Corvus, just put down there. ML Rain, you're not going to be able to use. She's a character that requires insane speed. Um, Crimson Armin is a very, very good knight. She is easy to build. She will definitely go S tier. She will, if you get her, she has a ton of mitigation. So Crozet's going to go A tier. He he is who I use for all of story as my tank. I didn't use Araz, I used Crozet. And I use him for front tank Wyvern. So having a knight on, as your front tank Wyvern versus having a Soul Weaver just makes your failed runs fail faster because as a new player you're not going to have a perfect wyvern team so by having a tank like croza in, in the front makes it to where when you fail a run you are getting out of that into the next fight two minutes faster so it saves you up to 30 minutes a day trying to farm wyvern if you're getting unlucky and failing runs missing your debuff so by having a front tank you're saving so much time and getting so many more wyvern runs done dark cordis is a new player he's there's just so many characters that are good with injury he can be used in guild war i mean free hp set use him in guild war with destina i'll put him at a if you pick him right but you got to know the game to really utilize him so as a new player he's probably a b some people say to take him from selective summon or people made fun of someone who told you to do that he can he can be used in guild war but that's the only place you can't use him in rt anymore there's too many injury characters desert jewel basar is actually still pretty good you can gear him Pretty quick, pretty fast. So you can get him to at least 220, 230 and put him on the four star artifact. And he, he can be used, but pretty hard to do. Dilibet is a character that's reasonably easy to gear because she doesn't take gear that anyone else does. I got her on my 30 day account. I'm going to put her at S because she gives you a cleanser. You don't have to build her on damage if you if you don't get the gear for it. So she has a couple build options, especially for an early game player that just gives you flexibility within her draft. Destina is going straight up to S tier as a new player. Um, or S plus tier. She just gives you a reviver. She gives you full cleanse. She gives you CR push. Um, she's very tanky. She is a solid, solid character for new players. Deanne is a limited character. She's good, but she's hard to build fast, and you need her to be as fast as possible with as much bulk and effect rest. So you're not gonna be able to gear her properly right away, and she's a limited character, so you're not gonna end up getting her anyway for a long time. Dizzy, I'll go ahead and throw B tier. She'll be used for PV. I'm gonna throw Earl Horizon down. Don't even bother. I mean, it's Dom, you could use, but she's not going to be good. She's easy to gear, though, so I'll throw her there. Doris is the same. She could be used as a bait for... This is going to take a long time. This is going to be an hour-long video. There's so many characters. Um, she could be used for Guild War bait. She's okay in RTA. Eaton. Eaton's very easy to gear. I'm going to put him up to A. He gives you a very good survivable tank. Tanks tanks in this tier list are just going to get boosted up because they're so easy to gear. So, so as a new player, tanks are going to be your best friend. Just don't try to build too many tanks. So just pick the tanks that I put higher. If you don't have those, then pick one or two of these that you you see. You don't need a ton of tanks. Ida is not going to be good for a new player. You're not going to be able to gear her properly. She has a really good kit, but as, an, uh, as a new player, you're not going to be able to cleave right away. Elena is a character that is pretty solid. I'm going to put her to S tier. As a new player, you can build her like 200, 190 speed. And uh, she gives you a lot of survivability against cleave and some other drafts. So... Pretty good. Elfelt is another guilty gear character. You're not going to be able to use her properly. You're not going to get the speed stuff. Elson goes down here. Amelia, I wouldn't pull for Amelia as a new player either. Uh, Amelia can go up to A, but she she's a really good soul weaver. She's about the same level as Deanne. She's just falling off so hard. There's so many other better options out there. And as a new player, you're not going to have the speed gear to put on her to make her a really efficient Amelia. You can do an effector a slower one and maybe get more use out of that. But for right now, I would not really focus Amelia. There it goes there. Or Valen, I'm just going to put in a waiting room. You're not going to be able to gear a good enough one of those. This will go here because she's a character that requires speed. You're not going to have that as a new player. You're only going to be able to build one or two characters on like a decent amount of speed for the first two months. Maybe three. Um, if you're not spending money. So as a new player, she is very, very good. If she is the only character you build on speed, she would be put up to eight tier because she can just completely dismantle a draft. So I'll put her there. If you can get her to 240, you can probably get some really good use out of her. Flitica's going to be in the same boat as her. So if you choose, that's one of the couple characters you put your fastest gear on, she's good. So Clurry, so Falconer Clurry is going to go up to S tier. She is a very, very good character. 
she locks down, she's a knight, she provides um, mitigation for your team, she heals your team, she defense breaks for two turns, she is really, really good in RTA as a new player. Fallen Cecilia is also the same as a new player, she's very easy to gear, she has survivability, she, she's going to go up to S tier for sure too, and like I said, knights are just going to get free bonus. Um, Fighter Mai, you're not going to be able to really use. Flan, you're not going to be able to use at all. She, you will not have the speed for her. Free Spirit Tyria, as a new player, she can go up to A tier for sure. She's one of the she's the best free farmer. Furious can go there too. He's really good for Wyvern. General Pergus is going to go a little bit higher. General Pergus is going to go to S tier because you can put free HP set on him and he can be used in RTA and he can be used for Wyvern and he can be used for other content. So General Pergus is getting S tier. He's, he's a character that not a lot of people use him because you, they have better picks, but as a new player with a limited draft board, having him for Wyvern and being able to pick him in RTA as just like uh, an annoyance pick, he's very bulky. He does a little bit of damage. He can stun. He pushes your team up. That's going to be useful for some anti-cleave too. So he does have a, a viable spot in a lot of the game. I'm going to put him S tier. So Glenn, just very bottom. Gloomy Rain, bottom, bottom. She's, she's okay. She's going to be better than the bottom bottom, even though these are basically the same tier. <laughs> uh, she is good for Katie's, but in the first two months, you're not going to be farming Katie's anyway. Guy Day, there's the same thing. Gunther, just very bottom. Haste. Haste is not going to, you're not going to be able to build a good Haste, but his damage is insane. So I'll put him a little, a little higher. Hatan. Hazel. So Hazel's going to go straight up to A tier. Hazel is going to be one of the characters you used to be Zeo as a new player. Trying to do the one shot as a new player, if you only play in two months, it's going to be nearly impossible. Your team for Zeo is going to be Hazel, Bomb Autocana, Fire Mercedes, and a -Raz. And it, you don't need good gear. You don't even need to finish your trees. Uh, you just need decent gear, and you'll end up getting a run that will clear it. And it, it makes the Zeo fight cake by having that team of four and playing the mechanics properly. So I will have that guide up, but it's going to be a, a while before I do it. But it was very, very easy for me to do on the 30-day account challenge. So Euphine can go up to B tier. Why is Axe got here? Okay, so some of these characters, Coley. All right, so I messed up the tiers a little bit. So if you're watching and like disagreeing with me on certain tiers, the tiers are a little messed up. I think that's, yeah, that, that, that that's more of where I wanted it to be. Having two waiting rooms is not good. I should have rearranged it. All right, Ilanev can go a little bit higher, but you're not gonna have the gear to build a good one of her. Kawazu is easy to gear and usable. He's going to A tier. You can use him as a counter pick. He's good for Guild Wars. So the new Jenna can go up to B tier at least. She requires high speed. Judge Kisei. Judge Kisei, if you put her on fast enough gear, she can be pretty good. But, or if you use her as a cleave unit, but the problem is if you don't have an opener for her, she's not going to be great. But she has insane damage. So if you put a free attack set on her and you have a Destina that's going to go before the enemy team, you can push her up. She'll still do okay damage. I'll put her there. She doesn't really deserve it, but I love Judge Kisei. She's not really good at all for a new player, but if you know what you're doing, you can find a way to make her work. So Kana is going to get pushed up to the same tier for sure. So Kana, you're going to need her to beat Zeo, or you're going to want her for the easy, or for at least my method of, or not mine, it was Samul's actually. I watched his video. I was like, okay, this is easy. And uh, so his method of beating it is gonna need her corinne is okay she's usable in wyvern she can get a b uh fire kawana you're not gonna want to build her cowrick he has insane damage but you're not gonna be able to build him well but if you get him it's a good thing uh fire ken he has some use cases i'll put him at b um he can be used for a couple pve things and ancient inheritance he's like the god of ancient inheritance so if you get him don't feel bad he is going to be bad kiris is a pve or abyss monster but you don't need her when you have specter tenebria there's like maybe one floor you need her so she's not getting any higher than that Kitty clarissa is actually going to be moved up quite a bit she's going to be here at least she cleanses she dual attacks she she adds a lot to your team so if you wanted to use her say that you didn't get designer little bit but you got Kitty clarissa she can pretty much fit that same role to an extent um not maybe not the same role but she can she can kind of work in a similar way and she adds a lot to your team so she, she can be pretty good for a new player. So Kazuna AI, you're not going to be able to get her. Krow is going to get a free B tier. Krow's pretty good. Krow honestly can go up here. He 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 adds a lot of survivability and can just one-shot a character. So here's Falconer Clary. She's going to get up into A tier. I can take the other Clary. I'll just put them both there because... I don't feel like dragging him down. So Landy as a new player, I said within two months, 
is this guide. So Landy's gonna get S tier. Within two months, Landy, you can get a decent Landy built. The problem is not having Guiding Light. So if you have Landy but no Guiding Light, she is A tier. She, you won't be able to use her properly. Um, Landy for PVE is really good too though. So I'm gonna put her here at, at S. But if you don't have Guiding Light, just know that you're Landy. Guiding Light's a limited artifact that is Cerise's co-pair artifact. So when Cerise banners there, you can get Guiding Lights. But she she just a lot of people are pulling on her right now and she just can't fit that same same role so we have adventure raz at the top i'm just gonna put regular raz down here lr crow is insane he's definitely i think i might put him at s plus tier you can build uh you can build him very easily so he's gonna get s plus tier he's he's very easy to build so at least usable one and he is one of the best characters for rta he doesn't have much pve usage but uh, he doesn't I don't know if he has any to be fair, but he's so good in RT right now He's just getting S here. If you get him, you should be extremely happy. So lots has some use cases I'll put him there. Lena don't bother. Leo is good for helping with one-shotting Banshee and setting up Lydica, I'm gonna put in a waiting room. Lydica, I she's my favorite character in the game I have a poster behind me of her that epic 7 sent me But you are not gonna want to use her in any capacity. She has a couple use cases though she has a couple use cases. If Flan, I mean, let's put them here. If they can be used, we'll put them higher just so it doesn't confuse you. They are okay characters. You're just not gonna be able to use them as a new player. So Lilius as a new player, pretty solid. She can go up into S tier. She cleanses your team. She she has a lot of options now. Dilibet as a new player, there's just better options. I'm gonna put Dilibet in waiting room though. LQC is going up to S tier because if you build a Hellcutter build, she can be built very early on an account. So she gets S tier for sure. She provides mitigation to your team. So Rowana is going up to S plus tier though. Rowana is a for sure S plus tier unit. So Commander Lorena, she's good for PVE and some expeditions. She can go into B, she can go into A. She, she can't be used in PVP really at all, but you I mean you could try, but she's really good for PVE. So Lucy, I don't even know what she does, Ludwig, can be good on RTA, but she requires too good a gear, so he's going B. He's going to be character you're waiting to use. Lulica can be pretty good for Wyvern. She can go A. Uh, Luna is the same. Luna can be okay, but on an early account, she has... Luna can be used in more, but the S tier is going to be characters that could be used in both PvE and PvP. A is where they're used in either PvE or PvP. PvP or PvP or PvE only. This is this tier. And these are harder to build characters. These are easier to build characters. And then these are the characters that are just the free best characters. Okay. Trying to trying to give you the same. So this is Doris. I think we already talked about her. She's going to go into uh, B. No, she's going to go into A. Doris, I think the other Doris is here. This is a Magic Scholar Doris, I believe. But Doris, Doris can be used very, very well. Mascot Hazel, I'm going to put her up into B tier. Because the only thing you're going to use her for is PvE. And she has no PvP potential, in my opinion. So Fighter Maya, or Maya, she could be used, but not great. So if you get ML Kalric, obviously ML Kalric as a new player, one of the easiest characters to gear in the game to where he's usable. You get the artifact Warhorn from Guild for free, and he is set. You're going to have a good time with him. Melissa is a character that can't really be used a whole lot. She is better in a little bit, so I'll put her here. Fire Mercedes, as a new player, she is going to be top of the tier. Top tier character. You get a uh, you get a torrent set from Labyrinth. She is going to be one of your four heroes for PvP and PvE. She's super super good. Um, people at a high level can play against her much easier. But Mercenary Helga can be used for some PvE. Put her there. Mercer is pretty easy to gear and can be used in some PvP. I'd say Mercer goes up into that tier. Uh, Dizzy, Dizzy honestly can go up. I'm going to make adjustments as we're going. So the final tier list is going to be the most important thing. But if you want to hear me talk about a character, you can kind of skip around and see. I'm going in order. So if you see a character you want me to hear what I have to say about, you can move to it. Missy Chain down here. Silverbite Armentha is a character that you can bridge with. So as an early game player, if you build her decently, she can be okay. I'm going to put her in A tier. Uh, she can be really good. I still use her in almost every Guild War. So Montmorency, again, I'm going to put her up in A tier. So Mort, Mort just got a buff, but as a new player, you're not gonna be able to use them, but later on you might, so it'll be in B. Ukacha, Mui, same, she'll be B. Some of these characters, if I were to do a, a non-new player guide, like this would be lower than Mort probably, this would be higher. Like there'd be a little bit of difference, but with what I'm talking about, so 
uh, I think they're in the best spot I can put them. Operator Sigret, you're not gonna be able to gear. I'll be honest, she probably should be lower, but if you get her, you should be pretty excited because she does have use cases late, late game. You're not gonna be able to build a good one probably for three to four months of playing the game completely properly. If you haven't been playing the game properly, it could take you even longer, but she is a very solid character. Otil can go down here. Pavel, you're not gonna have the gear ever for him. I'll be honest, you're never gonna have the gear to make him usable. Um, most likely it'll take you a year. So Penelope, I'm just gonna throw in waiting room. Like, unless she gets an SC, I don't see her being used. Pergus, funny, I'm gonna put Pergus at the same tier as them because you could build a more usable Pergus faster than you could build any of these characters. So Blaze Dingo is actually really good for um, a couple. Uh, he's mostly just good for Labyrinth. Uh, he has a really high morale, so I'll put him there. You have other characters that you can gear versus trying to build him just for Lab. Ravi is going to get one tier above because Ravi is very easy to gear. And for new players, putting her on your defense team can completely screw over like Arena people who are new to Arena trying to climb. Everyone's going to have Spectenny, but she can just one-shot Spectenny if she's on a free attack set. So as a new player, if you do get Ravi, she is pretty solid. So Rem is a free character. She can be used for green expo. Being a free character, she can get moved up because she does have usability. Ray, I'll put in the same tier. Not great, not terrible. Rem is usable in one-shot Wyvern. So you can't use Rem for Wyvern as a new, like with like for regular Wyvern if you're not one-shotting and you're not gonna be able to one-shot for a long time. I would not even try to make a one-shot team as a newer player. So Rem is gonna be coming back soon. She is good for anti-cleave to an extent. I'll go ahead and give her S. No, I won't. She, she's hard to gear and you need Sacred Sight. So she's artifact dependent. She can't really be used for PvE too, too well. And she's not easy to gear on a good, good set. So she's fallen off in PvP a bit. I'm going to put her at A tier. A lot of the good, like everyone's freaking out about the Guilty Gear collab coming back. One, you don't need to pull all the characters in this game. Like you're gonna get them eventually. As a new player, if you're starting, you see eight limited banners, just ignore it. Like those characters you'll pull, they'll sit in your account and then you waste all the materials to pull them and you have no progression. You're gonna quit the game in two months because you can't play the game anymore because you didn't play right and wasted all your stuff on limited summons. I hate the content creators that just say, if it's limited, pull on it. If you're a new player, don't listen to that. Like. There's going to be certain characters that are so, so good that, yeah, you can pull on them because you'll be able to use them soon. But if it's a character you're not going to be able to use, like Jacko, you're not going to be able to use Jacko for six months of playing the game, probably, if not longer, and you're never going to end up using her. There's probably going to be a replacement by then. So a lot of these limited characters, unless you really like the Guilty Gear, I love Dizzy, I want to pull Dizzy, just ignore them. Like, it's not, like, you don't have to have, you're going to end up getting them anyway. They're going to come back. They're just Every collab has come back a million times. So Rylet is a new character or a new player, in two months you will get the free lifesteal set from Abyss. He is definitely going to S tier. Very, very good. If you get him, congrats, that's huge. So here's Researcher Carrot. I think I put the other carrot kind of lower. She's just, yeah, I put her here. She's just not that great anymore. She can be used, but not great. So these are going here. Ren, I'm just gonna put Ren here. There's no reason for her to use her. Roman's the same, there's better characters. Rose, I'll put a little bit higher because she can be used for Wyvern and some PvE content. Ruel, if you do get Ruel, she is a reviver. She adds some sustain. I'm putting her a B tier. Just get Destina. Destina's just better. I don't know where you use Ruel besides Guild Wars and Arena trying to light bait. Uh, Sage Ball is a character that's going to be good no matter what. He's going up into... Honestly, Sage Ball is going into S tier. You can build him on some pretty crappy gear and he will still do his job. So he can go into S tier. He's very annoying. He completely stops cleavers when you're trying to get an RTA. Sure, he's a character that has some potential, so he can go into B tier. I should have made more tiers. That would have made this a lot cleaner. Maid Chloe is a very solid character. If you get her, definitely better than Ruel. She can go into this. Any any kind of Soul Weaver character, they're just easy to at least gear. You might not have them geared well, but you'll have them geared to where they're usable. So she'll go here. She adds revive. She has attack buff. She has a ton of stuff for your team. Next up, we're going to have Kisei. I know a lot of people are going to say Kisei is better than where I'm going to put her, but I'm going to put her in B. You're not going to have the speed gear to build her very good. You're, the gear that you would have in the first two months of playing is going to be better on other characters. She will be good later on. She has some use cases, uh, some drafts she's very good in. But for right now, you're, she's like Kaurik. She's better than Kaurik, but you're just not going to be able to fully utilize her, so don't worry about it. Kron is a character. So I do account work. Kron is a character I'll always like remember for new players. Because I do account work, and I put, I, 
This guy had me doing his account. The first person that, or the only person that was ever unhappy with the account work I did for them. They thought their account was way better than it was. They had no usable gear. I didn't even have a Wyvern 13 team set up. I set up their Wyvern 13 team and I, I did a lot of work on their account. Like I, I, I did, I thought I did a fantastic job for what he had, but he, he was like, this is not what I was expecting. I was like, I don't know what you were expecting then. I did so much. But one of the things was I put his Charon on Spitza. So Charon on Spitza can be used in a ton of PVE and he can still be used in some PVP for like arena guild wars if you pick him properly. And he was like, he was complaining that Charon was on, on speed set. And I was like, he's good for a lot of non PVP content on speed set. But that was just one of his complaints. Cause he saw somebody else with a counter effect as Charon thinking he was going to have the gear for that as someone who wasn't even farming Wyvern 13. So that that's just something I always remember, but Charon can be very, very good for a lot of content. He can be good in PvP. There's a bunch of builds for him. If you have Kron, he's he, he's a very solid unit and has a lot of flexibility. I don't know. Sorry for the story time there, but that was I always remember that because the first person that ever was like this, or that that was not happy with the account work that I did. I was I was just bummed because I've never gotten that. I've done 600 accounts and never had someone be be like that. But it was I I tried not to take it too much because I could just tell he had no idea what he's talking about. So. Next up, we have Cigarette. Cigarette is a free character you get from Wyvern. SSB is going to go into A tier because uh, she's good for Wyvern. She's good for a lot of PVE. She can be good for PVP. She, I'm going to put SSB up here. She's a limited character. I don't know. With, with how many counters are LR Crow, I'm going to put her down here. SSB is just so hard to use now. You can put her on Bloodstone and build a really tanky team. But as a new player, you're not going to be able to utilize her. Cigarette is a character that's just going to go here. She's just for PvE. She's, you're not going to use her for PvP at all. So she's just going here. A lot of people say, well, Cigarette can one-shot Zeo. She, Cigarette can... You can boost into her. You're not going to have the characters with enough speed to boost a Cigarette in proper PvP. So Cigarette's going to go to A. She's a free character. I mean, you can't expect more. Senya is going to S tier. Senya is... There's a billion different builds you can build for Senya. Wait, I don't have to drag, do I? I, oh, I can scroll while doing this. Okay, I can do this way faster. Senya is S tier because she's easy to gear. A lot of builds you can do and all of them work. Cirilla, don't worry about getting. Sez can go into B tier. If you build him on a lifesteal set later, he's okay, but there's better. Shadow Rose can be good for Banshee. Shooting Star Arcades has some lab potential. Silk, trash. Soul bad guy, I mean, he's free. You can put him there. You can use him in a couple things. Sonya, trash. Specimen says, Specimen says as a new player, if I got Specimen Says as a new player, he would be A. I would be able to make this character work wonders in early RTA. Build him pretty tanky, not a lot of damage. I, I could make this character work wonders. I'm putting him A tier. I've always put Spez high on my tier list because if you if you have a certain play style, he works really well. But maybe with the current meta, he might be a little bit worse. He's probably more or less a B, but I think if I had Spez, I could go on a tear with him in RTA. But because with Arrowell now with Spez, I really think as a new player, he could be like part of your core combo for, for climbing. So Strays as a new player, he, you can end up putting him on attack side. He can clear, he's just, he's really, really strong. You can't use him to his full potential as a new player, but you can, you can get a lot of use out of him. Putting him in A, there's, it's just going to be very hard for you to get him to the, the like stats you need to use him for PVP, but he's very good for PVE. So he, I think A is pretty fair. C Seria will be A too. It's gonna be hard for you to use her having an opener that AOEs. So that's gonna be a little hard. CERN, I'm just throwing straight into waiting room. Don't bother, there's other speed imprints. Sven, Sven you could technically use, but if I'm putting CERN in waiting room, just throw Sven there. So Tamron, I'm gonna go ahead and throw up an S tier. She is so, so good at PVE. She's not good at PVP, but she is such a core PVE character. She's going straight into S tier. She is, like I said, the first banner you should summon on no matter what, even if there's limiteds. So Terranor Guard, Wyvern, and Abyss God, I'm throwing him into... I'm going to throw Terranor Guard into A, just because he's three-star, he has so much potential for PV or PvE content. I clear a ton of Abyss with him, he just makes everything faster. He, he, he's very, very good. So Terranor Royal Guard could technically be used as a Wyvern front tank. I'll put him here. Not great, but not terrible. T Cern can go ahead and get a B tier. She's pretty easy to gear. You can throw her on the T85 lifesteal set and give you, yourself an extra character. So she'll go up there. This is a PvP and PvE tier list, so keep that in mind. 
Uh, Tenebria is, can be very, very good for a lot of PvE and has some PvP potential if you build her fast enough. So I'll throw her there. Um, I thought I already did Free Spiritaria. Free Spiritaria is an... Yeah, I did. Why? Oh, that's Tyria. Okay. Regular Tyria, sorry, is Waiting Room. She is... That's her only use. So Tomica, you're not going to be able to use properly. You're not going to be able to get her fast enough. She is going to go into B. She actually just disappeared. Somehow ended up in Waiting Room. If I drag... Oh, no, it's working. She, you're not going to be able to build her to her potential. She is a good character, but she takes way too hard of gear for a new player. Croza, as a new player, he's going into S rank. He's a tank. He makes your backline super, super, super strong. He is a character that if you get, you can utilize him a lot as a new player in PvP and a little in PvE. Add Legos. Wait. Drag too far down. Tywin, he's pretty much just going to be used for Wyvern Front Tank. He can be okay in some PvP because your backline can't get stunned, but not great. Vildred, Vildred can get A. He has multiple use cases, and as you get further, he has more use cases. Violet is a super easy character to gear as a new player. So Violet's going to go like toward the top of A, just to note that he's not S, but you can put the free lifesteal set on him from Abyss, and he is already usable. So Spectre Tibria going straight up into S plus tier. She is the best character you can get as a new player, in my opinion. Vivian is only going to be used for Banshee, Banshee, Banshee one shot, maybe some other one shots later, but those one shots are going to take some probably pretty good gear on her. So let's just put her for B for a new player. Uh, Wanda can go down there. Wonder Silk will put at B. She's nice to have to defeat Silks into because you'll get um, some use out of her later. Romy Warrior Leo, just waiting room him. I'm, I'm sorry. Euphine is going to go into B. She has a lot of potential. For later, you, there's like a special lab run thing you can do, and she she's very good for that to where you, you can like full efficiently farm labs. So Yuna is not terrible. You could make her work. This is Zealot Carmen Rose. This is the Carmen Rose that's supposed to be in whichever tier I put Carmen Rose. I think I put her in B. Yeah, I put her in B. So regular Carmen Rose will drag back down. Uh, Zeno, don't worry about champ or that. Don't worry about Oxlots. I'm just going to put in B. You don't want to try to use Oxlots. He has too low base speed. He can be used for a couple things, but don't put a ton of resources into him. Don't six star him. Uh, you're better off. You're going to get other characters that can do the same thing. Maybe for climbing early arena, if you have like strays, having him plus strays, you could just clobber arena and climb really fast. But otherwise, I mean, I'll put Oxlots at. He falls off later game, but as an early game player, I think you can get a lot of use out of him. I'll put him at A getting him opens you up to a lot so politus gives you a lot of options and she does disrupt some pve with cr pushing so i'm gonna put her at a she can be good in a lot of things so solitary is getting an s tier solitary is easy to gear um you need to build her somewhat fast but she doesn't have to be super fast because if she gets provoked or anything she still s1s and causes chaos for the enemy so i got her on my 30 day account which might and not, even not being biased she would be s tier for sure as a new player you just you could gear her very very poorly and she'd be good so we're going to put angel of light angelica s tier easily D like she's too good at pvp she's too good at just every everything that you do with her same with bellion bellion she just disrupts so much with the game that she's going s tier those are two of the strongest characters in the game milum as a new player i'll put her at a you could probably get away within two months of building her decently rimuru as a new player though is going to get s for sure Remaru is easy to gear, super, super obnoxious to deal with. Um, Shuna is just going to, I mean, Shuna can get A tier 2. She's she's pretty solid. She she can counter some stuff. She's not hard to gear. Ran, this is one that a lot of you guys are going to hate me on. Ran as a new player probably doesn't even deserve A. You cannot build a proper Ran. You can maybe build them 250, 260 by the end of two months of playing with some decent damage if you get lucky, 270, 275. If you get super lucky, faster, but... You're not going to have the characters to follow him. As a new player, you should not be trying to build Ran. Focus your focus your gear on other things until you get proper speed for not just Ran, but some other characters. If you can build a 300 or 290 plus Ran in the first two months of playing, amazing. If you can't, don't don't bother wasting putting stuff on him that he's going to be amazing. So see Lilius. This is a character that is going S tier no matter what. She's amazing for PvE, PvP. Even if you can't get her to 280 speed, a 250C Lilius is amazing for a, a new player. 240C Lilius, anything. She's so, so good. Uh, Laika is just going to go B tier. She's not great for a new player. Arrowell is not bad. It's because she's a knight. She can get A tier. 
she can be, or it's her specially changed to get it. So the Hawk is a new player. If you're going to get one character to 240 speed, so if you have a 240 ran, put that gear on the Hawk. It's going to just end up much, much better. So I already put a Bellion up in S tier. Why are there two of certain ones of these? I already did Bellion. So next up we have Sol Selene. Uh, Selene just has to be built on speed set and she gives revive. I would go ahead and put her A. She she could be pretty useful for a new player. Um, Bad Cat Armin, I would probably... I'd probably put H. No, she's too easy to play around. I'll put B for Bad Cat Armin. She's not bad, but she's not great. Hua Young as a new player. She can still be used, but not great. Lionheart Sermia, within two months, you can, you can get her geared pretty well. So Lionheart Sermia is just going to go to S. She's so, so good. And if you focus, if you get her, she's a character you should focus on trying to get right away. So Piera, I'm going to put an A tier, same as Ran. They're both characters you won't really need, be able to focus right away because you won't have the speed. So yes, I know they look faster, but building a 260 Piera just isn't worth it versus building something else a little bit faster. But or this character though, so here's the thing. A lot of players get Ran and Piera and they think, I'm going to build this character as fast as possible. So as a new player... 260 is not enough. Like you're not going to be contesting. Whereas if you put the gear from Piera on a Pyro Captain Flan, if you get lucky and get her, and so a 260 Piera is a 230, 240 Pyro Captain Flan. 240 Pyro Captain Flan will just win you games. Piera is not going to solo win you games. Pyro Captain Flan will. So the same gear. There's a lot of these characters just have a better use case. So like Ran versus a Hawk. If you don't have a super fast Ran. The gear, a 260 ran, it's better to have a 230 as a hawk. So there are just certain characters that if you can't truly build him the way that they need to be built, you're better off building the next character, especially with speed, the character that is going to be ran at that next speed tier down and putting the gear on them, and then they're actually good. They're a good version instead of running a bad version of a character you shouldn't be trying to make work anyway. So this character is a god. This character is going S plus tier. She's so easy to gear. She's so good in the meta right now. She adds so much of everything. I think her name's Sharoon. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. The Shuna and Sharoon. I get confused. It's Sharoon. She was insane for my new player account. She is so, so good for PvP. Um, she isn't using PvE and PvP. I know I said this is going to be uh, like a tier list up top that can be used in both. But there's certain characters that I find so good in PvP. They're going in S plus for sure. So, Summer Break Charlotte, she's okay. Uh, it's going to be hard to gear her properly. I'm going to put her in A. There's a chance you can get her built up. She can be used decently in RTA. And she can be used in, uh, kind of for faster farming. Just not bad. So, Sylvan Sage Vivian is another character. If you get, she's going to go into A tier. She's just like Rylet. If you get that, uh, if you get Rylet or her, or there's a third character that I don't remember right now. But once you clear Abyss 100 or around 100, you get the lifesteal set. That lifesteal set will be good on e any of those these characters. So if you get lucky on this, clearing Abyss 100, you'll have a free gear set. You can use them within the, the time frame that I'm talking about. Taeyu is not going to be good for a new player. I'm just going to throw him down. Yulha as a new player, fantastic. I I'll give her at least A. Actually, Yulha, Yulha can go to S. Yulha adds a lot of survivability. She's just like crowd. If I gave crowd that high, Commander Pavla is a new player. You're not going to have the bridge openers. He can have A, but it's going to be hard as a new player to get truly to work. Ed is a new player. If you are playing at a time where Edward is coming back, he's S tier. Actually, Ed is a, he's S plus tier. Ed's so good. Um, if, if he's around when you're coming back. Riza can be used for Wyvern. I tried it. It was kind of fun. Roy is another character that can be used on that lifesteal gear. He won't be as good. I'll give Roy I'll give Roy A because he's much harder to gear. But Roy is very, very strong. So as a new player, Astromancer Elena is getting B. If Spez is getting B, she's getting B. She's not really good for a new player at all, but if you build her bulky and take her into an arena team that has like Rim and a bunch of characters that counter. She can be good. She can help you climb. She's about like ML Haste. If there's specific teams that she'd be okay against, but you're not going to be able to utilize her as a new player. And even as a veteran player, you can't really utilize her. So Lua. Lua is a character that's so good, but you need to build her fast. So Lua, and she's really only good for PvP. I'm going to put Lua in S tier. She's, she's an S plus tier character normally, but as a new player, I don't think you can truly get everything out of her. All these characters up here are pretty easy to gear. 
all of them are are very easy to gear except for sea lilies but like i said you can run sea lilies slower you cannot run lua slower and get the full use case out of her so we'll we'll drop her a little bit so here is the proper arrow well um well let's go ahead and put her up here and drag her back down because if you're going to use arrow well you're going to use the specialty change Arunka, you're not gonna be able to gear as a new player properly. Zeo, if you get Zeo, he can kind of help you cheese as a new player. I'll put him at S because if you put your faster or some of your faster gear on him as you start farming Wyvern, he will allow you to kind of contest, uh, especially earlier cleavers. So he, he, can, he can be annoying for sure. So if you get him, he just gives a big gear boost. Ning Ning, you're not gonna be able to use too well, but if he, she's the same as Desert Jewel Basar. So I think this is where I put Desert Jewel Basar. Uh, Winter as a new player, if she comes back, she's going to be hard to gear to get the crit chance. But I think <sighs> she's like these characters. If you don't have the speed, she isn't going to work. Aiden, S plus tier. This character, behind Spectre Seabra, these are your two hard carries for RTA that you're going to get guaranteed. So Spectre Seabra and Aiden is going to be the number one character for each, each new account. So this video ended up being exactly an hour. That's crazy. I just spent an hour going over this. Uh, Giselle is not going to be good. She can go down here. Karina. As a new player, you can probably get away with building a decent Karina, and she will be amazing for you. Uh, within two months, you're you're not going to have a lot of other use cases for the defense gear you get, so you can put it on her. And I think within, within two months, you could get a pretty solid one of her built. But she is a limited character as well. Bihu is not going to be good for new players or old players. <laughs> Uh, Death Dealer Ray for new players. He's a character that's pretty easy to gear, but it's just about learning where to play him. So a lot of these characters up here, the reason I put them in S tier is because they're easy to gear. Death Dealer Ray doesn't take damage gear, doesn't take high speed. So you can just get the gear that doesn't roll speed, that, that rolls a little speed with a little bulk. Maybe it has effectiveness and effect res. He'll take gear that you wouldn't be able to use on most of the characters, that if it rolled well, he, there's a home for it. So getting him is a good thing and you can make him work. Next up down here, Peacemaker Furious. I think he'd be usable, but not really sure. Ahmed, you're not going to have the speed to make her work properly, but she can go up with Ning Ning about the same. Crescent Moon Bologna, you are not going to be able to build this character. She is definitely A tier, but as a new pl new player, you're not going to be able to build a good version of her. I'll tell you right now. There's no way. Getting her is amazing, but you're not going to be able to build her within the two months, too. And, and she's artifact reliant, too. She needs um, some sustainability. Command model Leica, she's going to go up here too. She's fantastic. She is extremely good for pretty much everything, but she's a high risk, high reward character. A lot of the time, like you basically bring her into any kind of PVP fight, you use her and she kills a character, but then she dies. So either she kills a character and pushes you to where you can cleave the rest of the team, or you just kill off the main threat. She dies, but then you win with your uh, like your, your 3v3. She makes it to where you can kill one thing and get a 3v3 of your choice. And it's, it, it works out really good for PvP. She's almost always banned. So Elagos, you're not going to be able to use properly. I'll go ahead and throw him here. Benny Maru, you could use more than Elagos, but I'll put him with those. Uh, Twisted k -Ron. This character is... I don't think you'll be able to use him as a new player. He takes insane gear score to be truly viable. I don't think he's a bad character. Uh, everyone says he's bad. I think Twisted Kron may be a little changed, but if you play him properly in RTA, you shouldn't lose. If you draft him, you should be drafting him in a certain situation where you shouldn't lose, which I guess people think that you should be able to pick him more often, uh, but... If you make him, if you change him much, he's gonna be too strong and everyone's gonna hate him. So, but it is Karon, so it is worth it. So Abigail for a new player is actually fantastic. She's going S tier. She's super easy to gear. You don't have to build any damage on her to build her as bulky as possible, and she gives you a lot of flexibility in your PvP. And she can be used for PvP. Requiem Rowani, you're not gonna be able to use. If Karon's going here, she's going here. You're not gonna have an opener. You're not gonna be able to utilize her at all. She, these are good characters though. Like these are characters that even if you get them, you'll be able to use them later. But just don't try to use them right away. Last piece, Corinne, I'm going to go ahead and put at A tier, or yeah, A tier with these. She is really good. She basically is like Zahak. You need very good gear for her. So this is a character, say if you build a 260 Ran, take the Ran gear off and put it on her if you get her, because she is going to do a lot more for you than a 260 Ran. So last two characters. This character, limited character, just went away. Lethe's not on here. Lethe, for a new player, I'd probably put at A. 
she's gonna be hard to gear up to the point that you could truly utilize her but this character is amazing so lulica she's very she's pretty easy to gear for a new player to a point where she's usable and she adds a lot of sustain to your team she adds silence and blind to the opponent and my 30 day rta challenge she she was very useful last up jacko this is a character that's coming to guilty gear i don't think you're going to be able to use her very well because you're not going to have an opener uh, in your first two months or you're not going to have many openers so getting her is okay but like i said biken if you can only pull one guilty gear character i'd pull biken as a new player just for account progression and then next year by the time she comes back so he, okay here last closing thoughts on this my mindset with epic seven if you're following a new player guide is you need to be focusing on progressing your account so that you can start getting good gear and everything all the like the weekly rewards and monthly rewards to the max as possible getting expedition level three uh for every time you clear hunts and you can clear those getting every uh the hardest lab stuff every month by getting all of that stuff earlier and not spending all your summons on limited characters that are just going to sit in your box for even longer because you use all your resources to get them by using your resources on refreshing summons getting to the point where you're getting higher arena rewards faster by doing all of that in three months would you rather have an extra 4,000 5,000 sky stones from passively playing plus a ton of better gear um tons of better uh drops and stuff from lab and every you're gonna get so much more of everything by focusing your resources to be able to clear all content first first being a new player and summoning jacko so it in three months, you'll still have Jacko sitting there with no gear on, plus whatever other limited characters you decided to pull on. Would you rather have them still sitting there, unusable, or would you rather have a ton of account progress and more resources that you got because you did this stuff earlier to where when the next year comes around, you'll have the gear for them. You'll have the, the things that you need. And you'll still have a fun account because you did everything properly and are getting that gear and continue to upgrading as you, as you get new characters. So I hate the idea of telling people to pull on collab characters every time, especially if they're not going to be able to use them. So that's just my take on it. Some of you might be like, what if they don't come back? There's if a character doesn't come back, they're never going to be meta. The game, Epic Seven's not that dumb. They will not bounce the game around a character that never comes back. I don't know. As a casual player, maybe if you're a collector, go ahead and do it. But if you're someone who's wanting to play the game, get get your account really strong and be able to have fun with the late game content of playing pvp do like playing pvp against your friends who are also into the game getting into uh, rta and trying to get get better that's one thing i don't some people just play games and just don't care for me when i play a game i always want to be getting better and like making progress because that's kind of what games are like an escape from the regular world to I, I yes i could be pushing irl but instead i'm pushing in a game because it is more fun i don't know that's just my mindset on it you can you can play the game however you want but I, my guide is focusing on getting you to a point where you are going to stick with the game and not have a bunch of characters sitting in your account that are limited so you're never going to use so that is it for this video uh sorry i'm kind of brain farted i've been talking for an hour i did not expect this to take an hour there are so many characters in this game but in terms of the highest uh, these, I would not change anything. These are all insane characters. Yes, some of them are a PvP only, but they are so good at PvP only, they deserve top. This is easy to gear characters that could be used for, easy to gear characters or characters that you could gear within two months of playing that could, would be very strong for your account. A tier is kind of like getting into the random if you got the artifacts that make them work good, if you got lucky on speed rolls, if you got lucky on um, different different things. These could be good characters. Uh, all of A tier. B tier is like you have to get super lucky to be able to utilize them to a, a point that's really good. Um, or they're just good at PVE for a couple things. Same with A tier. They're good at some PVE. So that's this. Most of these, I would not worry about anything in B tier, it looks like. Uh, waiting rooms, these are all characters you just ignore within the game. So there might be one or two things that are like moved around, but this is an hour long video. I'm trying to cut it off before it's an hour, but thank you guys for watching. If you are not following the new player guide and are getting into E7, make sure to go watch day one, day two. I'm starting to make the guides like 20 minutes long each so that you don't have to sit through an hour like this one of fo trying to follow. You can just follow a piece, play for a little bit, come back, follow the next piece once you get to the stopping point. So I'm trying to structure them pretty well to where you can kind of play at your own pace, but not get overwhelmed. I think the guides are 
doing pretty good like they i think they're pretty helpful but the overall goal with the guide is to get you to a point where your account can do pretty much all pve within 30 days and you can start like knowing what to focus on and then start taking the game like more seriously learning the game to a deeper level but, all right it's been much if you're new to the channel if you're willing to subscribe it'd be awesome thank you for watching if you watch this far you're insane but i will see you all in the next video peace out